Confession time. I suppose now is as good a time as I need to tell you that I haven't been entirely honest with you about something. Don't worry. This isn't one of those Palpatine is your pappy kind of things. More of an innocent omission to protect your head from exploding on the first lesson. Remember that big picture of attraction design that I've been rambling on about? That's right, this thing. Don't freak out, but it actually looks a little more like this. Easy there, partner. You're looking a little pale. Why don't you sit down, take a deep breath, down a fifth of tequila, and let me explain why everything is going to be okay. While this news clearly caught you by a complete surprise, the rest of us are well aware that most theme park attractions have way more than one ride vehicle. Lucky for you, our show control ecosystem has been designed with this in mind, allowing you to easily push project and media updates to the entire fleet, and making it easy for V16X units on the wayside to control and monitor the fleet of ride players. The best way to explain how all of this works is by example, so let's get to it. We're going to start here by opening the script that we left off with from previous lessons. Now the first thing I'm going to do here is click on the devices button up here. And we can see here that this first device is my ride player. It's named RV. And we can tell this script is written for just one ride player. In order to make it work for multiple ride players or fleet of vehicles, I just have to click this edit button here. And then this checkbox here used on multiple controllers. I'm going to enable that. And let's say we had a fleet of 20 vehicles. I would just punch in a 20 here. Now we can see what's happened is my device's name is RV. That's my ride player. What's happened is it's created an array of devices based on that name with an index number, 1 through 20. I'm going to click Finish here. And we can see the impact it has right here, used on 20 controllers. All right, so besides updating this text in this Details column, what other impact does this have? Well, the first, which we'll talk about in a little bit, uh, involves sending and deploying this script to the 20 ride player units out in the field. So we'll cover that in a sec. The other is uh, actually the devices in this list, the other devices. Uh, it's very possible that all 20 of those vehicles need to talk to a single device. They share that in common. The V16X here is a good example. There might only be one of these on the wayside. All 20 vehicles need to talk to it. That's pretty normal. The other situation that's a little bit more unique to this is, let's say that each vehicle had its own unique Control Logics PLC with its own unique IP address. That's a pretty common thing as well. So we need to specify maybe this a little differently for each vehicle. The way that we do that is by highlighting it and clicking Edit. Just like before, Alan Bradley, Control Logics or Guard Logics. Okay, and there's a little subtle thing, but right here, this little checkbox, we can click this uh, to use different IP addresses for multiple show controllers. This will expand out to our list of 20 RVs. And what we can do is specify a unique IP address for each PLC on each vehicle. So maybe it would go a little something like this, where each one has its own unique IP address. You get the idea. Okay, so we notice the little subtle difference here, just letting us know that uh, it's not just one IP address anymore, that it's different depending on what vehicle it is. And the other important thing to understand is that nothing's really changed when it comes to how we access the PLC data. As far as each ride player is concerned, they each see the PLC as VCS, and they still see the singular data points. So this is really just about telling each unique ride player what its unique PLC uh, IP address is so that it can access it. That's really all it is. All right. Let's talk about deployment. To get to that, we go up here and click Send. And WinScript scans the network, and it can see the single ride player I have on the network at the moment. And it currently still has its default name, ride player. Now let's say I wanted to assign this ride player to be part of my project, to be one of my 20 RV vehicles. What I can do is highlight it, click Properties, and then select which vehicle it is, 1 through 20. Let's say I wanted it to be RV1, click OK. And then what I'm going to do is go ahead and send my project to it. Now 
Now it's not only going to push my project, it's going to push my content as well. So we can see it transferring the WAV files. Controller is rebooting. There we go. So we can see here now, the device name has been assigned RV1. And the little green status indicator here basically just says that the this particular ride vehicle is up to date with the latest project and latest media files. This comes in handy when you're managing a fleet of 20 vehicles and you want to keep track of who's up to date and who's not. As you add more ride players to the fleet like this, you can easily push new content to an individual unit or multiple units just by selecting them before clicking the send button. You can even use this screen to deploy firmware updates to the fleet. Aside from being able to deploy project updates to the fleet, the other important requirement for managing a fleet of ride players is monitoring all of their status from a single V16X on the wayside. Let's learn how this is done. We're going to start by opening up the V16X script that we worked on earlier in this course. And I'm going to start by going to the devices list here because we need to let the V16 know about the fleet of ride players and how to get to them. So we're going to come here and hit new to create a new device. I strongly recommend you name the device the same thing as we named it on the ride player side. We'll see why that's convenient here in a little bit. So now Cormac Bride, ride player, and very important, we need to click this little box here for device array and say that there are 20 of them. That's our fleet. Down here, we'll see that we can individually uh, configure the IP addresses for each vehicle. So that might look a little something like this. You just need to enter in the IP addresses of the ride players, each of which should be unique. Okay, you get the idea. There we go. There's our fleet of 20 ride vehicles. Adding our fleet of ride players to this device list gives the V16X the ability to do two very important things. The first is send commands to the ride players. The second is get information back from the ride players. Let's talk about sending commands. The simplest way to explain this is to use a familiar example. So I'm going to go ahead and go up here and click on my sequences list. And you'll see that I've added a new sequence called RV start scene one. I'm going to go ahead and click into that. Now, up until now in this course, we've done all triggering for timeline playback from the ride player side. There are many situations where this may actually make sense to do it from the V16X side. So this example demonstrates that. Here we are starting the local timeline for scene one and then issuing a command to RV5 for it to start its timeline for scene one. And again, we're using that synchronous checkbox here so that this is scheduled to happen uh, at a synchronous time in the future. Now this works great if we need to trigger RV5 specifically but in the real world, this is a little bit too hard coded for most applications. So let me show you how to use variables to do this. I'm just going to go over to variables here. Now I've already created two variables to help us get started here. The first is just an integer that stores the number of the RV currently in scene one. Normally this is something we would get from a ride control system or something like that. The second is just a temporary string where we're going to build the device name of our RV. So that's that whole RV bracket five bracket uh, thing. And then the third one I'm going to create here is kind of a special one. We call this a device variable. So I might call it something like DEV scene one RV. Okay, and again, it is a device variable. Now for this type of variable, we actually pick the type of device that it represents, in this case, the ride player. I'm going to hit next, finish. I'll explain how this helps us here in a little bit. Okay, I'm going to go back to this start scene one sequence, and we're going to take a little bit of a different approach. All right, I'm going to add an event called format. This is what we use to build strings. So the result is going to get stored in my device name variable that I created. 
the format string is going to look a little something like this. We want to build that RV name. So RV square bracket percent D means I'm going to put an integer in there. Close bracket quotes. Now what variable do I want to stuff in there? That's our scene one RV integer, the other variable that we created. Okay. Go ahead and move that up here. All right, so that's going to build that string, RV bracket number bracket. Next thing we need to do is add another event, which is just going to be a simple set variable event. And we're going to set our device variable, dev scene one RV. We're going to set it to that str device name. So what that effectively does is it makes this basically a pointer to this device that isn't, has this name. So down here, rather than hard coding RV5, we can replace it with dev scene one RV. Pretty simple, right? So the idea here is that this number would probably be obtained from something like the ride control system on the V16X side. The ride control system will let the V16X know that, hey, Ride vehicle 5 is currently in scene 1. We then take that number, build that RV device name string, and then assign a pointer to it so that we can use it in this manner. Got it? So control is really that simple. We can either hard code the ride player's name with the number embedded within that name, or we can take advantage of this device variable uh, to create a dynamic pointer to that ride player, depending on the situation. Let's talk about the next part which is getting information back from the ride players. Since we're already in the v16x script, let's do the v16x side of this. The thing I recommend doing is going to the device variables over here, double click, and I'm gonna pick rv bracket star, which just represents all of the RVs. Now each RV is gonna store their own unique data, but I wanna create variables that uh, each one of them has for storing their own unique data. So for example, on the ride player side, we stored the vehicle position and the vehicle status. Let's say we wanted to get that data back to the V16X. We might do something like this. So there's int position and int status. Okay. So I only created one of these, but actually this is duplicated 20 times for each RV. Let's flip back over to the ride player script now. Within the ride player script, I've added two additional sequences here that will be triggered whenever uh, the position of the vehicle or the status of the vehicle change. The idea is that when the sequence is triggered, it's gonna send a message off to the V16 uh, to update that variable on the V16 side. First, I need to build that variable name which is going to be the name of my specific ride vehicle, so RV bracket number bracket dot int position. So let's see how we do this. Again, we're going to use that format event. Okay, I've created a string variable to store this assembled name. It's called strscs variable name. And it's going to look a little something like this. Percent %s, that's going to be a string that's our vehicle name, dot variable name, which is, in this case, int position, close quotes. Now, what's cool is the device name, the unique device name, rv bracket number, is actually uh, a device variable for the right player. So I can actually type in rv dot device name, and that will automatically get stuffed into there. Okay, now the next thing is we actually need to set this variable name in the v16x. So it would look a little something like this, v16x scs, set variable, okay, we're going to be setting a variable by name, so that variable name is that string variable that we assembled, and then the value is our vcs dot int position. Okay, 
So anytime this sequence is called, we're going to build that string name, and then we're going to set the name of that variable to the current BCS position. This will happen as often as that value is changed. Just a rinse and repeat for the status update like this, and I'll go ahead and push this to my ride player. All right, so I'm online and I'm now back to my v16x script. I just want to show now with the ride vehicle running, we can actually see status updates from that ride vehicle. So here's our position. And here's our status. Okay, so I'm going to stop the ride vehicle. Notice how both values change. Position stops incrementing and status goes to zero. Start it back up. And there we go. As you can see, fleet management with Ride Player and Winscript Live is easy. Just scale the Ride Player arrays based on the size of your fleet, and you're all set. We'll see you soon.